Right everyone, welcome back and this is your continuation of um, Dip Trace and we're going to be doing um, component design, custom components and that's why I have this data sheet for a crystal oscillator up on the screen Now then, um, when you come to uh, uh, design a component, data sheet is what you really need if not then you need a pair of um, calipers or a, a vernier or something like that or, you know something that can accurately measure your pin pitches and your uh, package dimensions but if you've got a data sheet then what you need to look for are the external dimensions and footprints okay footprints if you've got a an SMD package dimensions if it's a through hole package so on this one everything's done in um, millimeters Usually you have to take a guess, a uh, best guess to find out what units they use because they don't really state the units very often. Sometimes they'll have mixed units, um, so it can be a little bit of a, a headache to start off with if it's the first time that you're um, doing this, but uh, yeah. So, um, this crystal oscillator has three, comes in three different package styles, um, comes in surface mount, it comes in um, uh, in a dip package, through hole, uh, joined line packages. Either the eight pin package, the uh, five three one, or the fourteen pin package, the uh, fifty one. You can tell it's fourteen pin because it's one seven eight fourteen. The corner pins of a normal joined line, and if you take a look at the dimensions, that all matches up to a standard pitch. So um, for the eight pin package. Pitch spacing is uh, 2.45 millimeters or 0 0.1 inches if you're working in uh, imperial units. And as you can see, this is a multiple of um, uh, 2.54 millimeters, so it is in millimeters. This one is in multiples again of 2.54, it's 15.24. Uh, two rows of seven pins, two rows of seven pins, two rows of four, two rows of four, and so on. If you take a look at the uh, surface mount one, this is also in multiples of um, 2.54, uh, uh, two 2.54s, 5.08 millimeters. You know, pitch spacing is standard. That's why we love standardisation in engineering. Unfortunately, the lines are being blurred between uh, metric and imperial, and you do some manufacturers have started rounding off their pin spacings to whole units of millimetres which is a complete pain in the arse when you start to use mixed um, mixed pitch both imperial and metrics it's a pain in the arse but yeah anyway I'm jabbering on this is what we're going to be designing okay we're going to assume that it's not in the library we looked for it and it's not there and um, up here if you're not too sure about package sizes normally the packages are set this one is pin compatible with full size metal cans or full size half cans in other words they're talking about jewelry line packages for these ones uh, SMD is a custom size for this particular one and that's why they give you the footprint ah there it is units millimeters ah brilliant they actually sold us what the units are so you didn't have to guess sometimes they do tuck it away in corners so make sure you read every little line All right over to dip trace we've got our little uh, launcher op open to do a um, custom component you use two different um, dip trace uh, programs if you like one to design the, uh, the schematic uh, symbol use the component editor for that the other one for the PCB footprint and that's pattern editor now I always suggest you do the pattern editor first because sometimes the actual package has more pins than the actual schematic symbol. Why? If it's something like this, a dual in line um, package, uh, pin 8 might be no connection. So in schematic, you might only have 7 pins. When you come to doing the uh, PCB layout, you might have 7 pins. You might have the 8 pins. You might have 2 pins, which are both ground points, they're both the same potentials. So in schematic you might end up only doing 7 pins by accident because that's all the, the uh, schematic diagram shows 
if it does show a schematic in here, which it doesn't, unfortunately. No, it doesn't. Um, but in the pattern editor, you might have to do, you know, multiple things. You might have multiple ground pins, so it's always good to go from the pattern first. <coughs> also, in dip trace, when you have to match and attach uh, the patterns and the components together, i.e. the footprint of the schematic for um, transposing your schematic diagrams into a PCB, okay, you need to do that underneath the component editor. Okay, it's not under the pattern editor, so it's always good to start with a the pattern editor, then do the component editor. That way you're not flipping between the two continuously until you've got something working. You can work, you know, start to finish in a logical order. So let's kick this off. Pattern editor, click. Right then, this is a very uh, similar layout to the um, to your PCB package or the schematic package. Okay, they haven't really changed the layouts at all, which is really useful. So we know where everything is. Libraries down the left as usual. Big area in, in the middle for your design. Down the left, properties have been replaced with layers. Okay, each what layers mean? It's not top copper, bottom copper, seal, holes, or so on, masks, and all that sort of stuff. They're not the layers that you deal with in um, uh, component creation. The actual layers are the individual pins, if you do single pins, or layers of multiple pins. Okay, so the pin connections, as well as the um, any diagrams like your silk and your legend and your text and so on. But to make life easier, you can merge that all that stuff together. So if you end up with millions of layers, you can merge, say, all electrical connections together, merge all the silk diagrams together, merge all the text together, and so on. That's not a problem. Library is completely unpopulated simply because this is a fresh uh, component. It's not in the library, so you would want a nice empty one. Up the top. All your shapes and everything are all for um, creating your silks, masks, assembly points, etc. So all the shapes for that in the footprint area. And over here, tracks and pads have all been replaced with um, pads, basically, where your pins or your components go. So, first thing what we do, pattern properties, set type to 3. You can do they do have um, various other you know, templates that you can work so if you really want to edit about generally speaking if we're designing our own component it'll be a custom one maybe a custom fit so free style again it's got templates and crap like that don't really need to touch any of this just make sure it is free you do lock that so it is locks to freehand design next thing what you do you have to name your component this is the name of the component that will appear in your library so at the moment is labeled untitled we're going to do a crystal so we're going to call it um, well, a crystal by the actual name so what's the name of this device it's we're going to do the let's do the um, surface mount package let's say uh, we're dealing with a footprint so that's an SG 615. We can change that name to SG-615 uh, or 651. I'm a brain fart in the morning. 615. So, name 615. That's what we're going to call our component. That's what it appears as in the library over on the left hand side. Reference description. This is what it will be referenced as on the actual. Um, in the actual layout, so just like you've got a, an IC, it might be U1, U2, U3, U4, that's what you designate it, that's your reference, okay? Just like you'd have a resistor on your, on your um, design, it's normally denoted as an R plus, you know, your, your numbered value, your integer. So R1, R2, R3, R4. So this is a, a crystal, so we're going to call it XT. Value, normally we keep this blank. Uh, what I normally do anyway. Values, this is the value of your component. So if our crystal was say a 1 megahertz crystal, there we go, 1 megahertz, where and wherever you whack that component down, it's labeled as a 1 megahertz resistor. I thought uh, 1 megahertz crystal. If it was resistors, it would be 1 kilo ohm, 1 mega ohm, and so on. Leave it blank, 
simply because you'll be using this component multiple times you can get different values of the same component with the same footprint with the same name you know come on whack that information in in the schematic and in the PCB diagrams okay it's point is re-replicating a one megahertz crystal multiple times when it obviously isn't a one megahertz crystal so you add the value as and when you need it when you actually lay this down in your schematic so keep it blank that is completely done so it can be closed next thing that you want to do is sort out your library names so this is the name of your library we're going to call it uh, say uh, my library or custom maybe I'll stick with custom for now and you can give a hint to say what it is so my, lib my library whatever it is okay we are ready to start designing our component blue lines your origin this is what you measure from okay up here 2.54 pitch space and this is your grid setting this is what you snap to top middle bottom yep they're the layers that you work on normally we work on the top if it's through hole which we're gonna which we're not gonna do uh, everything's going to be on the top side normally for surface mount then in the schematic around the PCB you can always flip that to the bottom side if it was through hole then you again have it as top but when you design your holes you design with holes in them and it automatically says yeah look there's a hole in this it's a through hole device we'll put a pad on the other side for you it's really intelligent you know straightforward stuff so what do we need to know we need to know our dimensions because we're going to start laying down pads. Now you can either lay down pads as single pads, as rows, uh, oops, as rows, as uh, rectangulars, and as circles if you want. You know, you can. It's all predefined, so you can do that stuff if you want. I find the easiest way to do it is by uh, unless you're doing something which, as a standard pitch or something like that, you've got a shitload of pins then obviously you know placing lines circles squares etc becomes a neutral but usually you just have to place the pads first pad that you place will be pad one second pad that you place will be pad two second pad that you place will be pad three so pad one for pin one pad two for pin two pad three for pin three and so on Our origins here so let's whack down the first pad at the origin a second pad will be pad 2 which is in a little design over here so that's pin 1 it is here corresponding to pin 1 in a little diagram here pin 2 is the next one down which will be this footprint 0.58 apart so our next pad will be 0.58 look at the xy coordinates down the bottom here 0 0 where the origin is well we just have to move our mouse across and you can see the ranking up so that's 5.8 standard pitch and again up pin 4 over here pin 8 over here and these are you now they're opposite to each other and they're separated by a pitch of 8.8 .8 millimeters so there is 8.8 so 6 millimeters is there 8 millimeters there Eight millimeters somewhere between the two. Now then, can't actually tell where it is. What's a multiple of eight point eight in uh, millimeters? Well, it will be uh, an odd one, but the typical. So we're going to have to. This is where I say the lines are getting blurred. It's not a standard distance apart. So you need to go into your um, grids, snap to uh, a different grid size if you can, if not, do a uh, custom. So let's say 8.8 um, .8 apart in that direction, make sure it's the same in the opposite direction. That's, uh, uh, where have we gone? Uh, grid my grid grid custom identical with the X there we go 
So our other one will be over here. And it'll be there. Alright, as you can see, it's completely nudged up there, so we can't have custom grids. We can't have um, grid sizes that have been equal. Pain in the bloody ass. This is what I was saying. So we have to start customising grids, which is a real, real, real bloody nightmare to do. It's horrible. So let's say chuck one in a 8.8. Uh, .8. Let's add that in. So, grid size of... 2.54 for the X. Root size for the Y. Where's it gone? Ah, it's not there, right? Custom 8.8 .8 in the opposite direction. So here we are. So this pin is actually in the wrong place. A little select T, and we can shift it to where it should be. And why isn't that snapping? in the butt crack. Right, let's delete that one off and we'll wipe down the pad there. There we go. Now we've got pad 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Layer 0, layer 1, layer 3. We've got two layer 3s because I was working on a particular layer. So you have to be careful, but like I said, you can merge all these together. Select them all, merge them all. Yeah, right, no biggie. Customising pads, we need to do next. It is a surface mount, it's not through hole, so I need to get rid of the through hole. They're also different sizes, and um, they're all on the top side. So let's select all of our pads. Right click. Uh, where are we? Properties. Type and dimensions. So, yep, yeah, view, patterns, pad, properties, whatever. And we can start editing this. So, holes, shape type someone type is going to be surface mount grays out the holes gets rid of the holes type is going to be rectangular brilliant now we just have to whack in the dimensions dimensions of the pads are 1.3 millimeters by 3 millimeters so 1.3 by 3 millimeters okay okay there we have it a little design Let's zoom into this so we can see what it looks like up close. That's our footprint for our crystal and it actually matches its footprint here. Job done. All that we need to do now is add a silk. So let's say top silk, select this little square box just to say we have a component right there. As you can see, silk does go over the pads don't get the silk over the pads, otherwise you will be covering your pads with ink and you will not be able to solder to them successfully. So, change our grid settings again in both directions. You can do, so... View, pattern property, da 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 dum and This one, and say, to that style. And we can select our little arrow and we can like this about corners to adjust and there we go a little component is more or less done well in actual fact it is done there we go we've got our component done what you might want to do is just to do a little dot just to denote where uh, pin one is so that you know for orientation if you are doing your schematic and again over here we've got two different silk layers now just merge them together to tidy up and when it comes down to shifting stuff about it makes it a little bit easier everything's on the same layer you can select via layers you can select via single clicks if you want to move single elements you can do it via whatever you know whatever you're comfortable with at the end of the day but that is our component done all that we've got to do is save it now, saving components, make sure that you save it. It's the same name as your library name, which you stated earlier, so we said custom. Custom. 
and you want to save it underneath the dip trace library not the library under my documents sometimes it does default so that if you're on a um, Windows computer or a Mac or something it will save to your own personal files um, you have to my, you have to navigate to the actual dip trace installed location and save it underneath the libraries underneath that otherwise they don't get imported automatically into the schematic program or into the uh, PCB program computer goes the uh, program goes absolutely nuts looking for it and uh, when you come to design it you'll never find it because it's somewhere completely different that you have to point to so it means going into other files it's just a pain in the arse in the end of the day now then under your library you'll notice that some of these okay have got underscores the underscored um, libraries come first the ununderscored ones come second that's why you have a b c d f g and then repeating in a b c d you got libraries in two separate locations in alphabetical order which is so you've got all your generic stuff at the beginning you've got manufacturing names later on in your libraries if you notice that in the last one that's because you've got this little underscore at the beginning so if you want your one to go to the front of the library make sure it's underscored and uh, save and there we go we're done and then next we've done our pattern we've done our footprint next up is the uh, schematic so select that exactly the same layout exactly the same thing as previously the only difference is pads have been replaced with pins and also you're not working on top layer or bottom layer or anything like that so the layers are gone because it's a schematic obviously it's all on the same bloody layer so let's start setting this up name component name was the sg-315 uh, i think it was reference was xt so keep it the same that's all done it can be all locked up and what have you close that off library library names and hints custom keep it the same your hints my library whatever exactly the same as before and then padding it out you do exactly the same thing try and keep the pads the same so but you don't have to do the same design you can do any design you can go pin one two three four done no, it's a schematic it's not your layout you don't have to place the pins exactly where wherever they are in the design and again it's pin one pin two pin three pin four you can do a little symbol if you want so i'm going to have that symbol as my crystal and if you want you can label it up if you want doing text and you can say you know my next to my crystal or whatever it is on there I'm not going to bother but you know there we go it's done you can merge all the pins together <coughs> and um, yeah job done what you might want to do move the origin to say around the center or around pin one so it does rotate around somewhere reasonable uh, next thing that you want to do is to start labeling up your pins so pin one pin name let's say it's the enable pin make sure that you select show name what you can do is when you come to um, if you're going to be auto routing or auto placing you might want to set the type and the electrical layers okay so that the actual auto router knows whether it's a power device whether it's a signal device whether that pin is an actual power pin whether it's a signal pin so it knows what to cross and what to run and what to connect where as, efficient, as efficiently as possible lots of packages don't have that set for this one I'm not going to bother because this is a quickie little demo little quickie little walkthrough you can mess about that if you want later on so yeah so name the uh, name the pin keep the number the same pin one show name okay and there it is pin one is our oe it's enabled and on here pin one is you know oe or enable p1 
pin 4 is ground, pin 5 is out, but pin 8 is VCC, so it'll be going down, it'll be, it'll conform to the same table, so it'll be OE, GND, out, VCC, so let's just label those in, so GND, show name, and it's always useful to show the names with the pins and what have you, simply because, um, um, you know, it makes doing the schematic that really much easier. You, you don't have to go searching for data sheets to find out what pins what. So, yeah, so here we go. All done. And, um, yeah, that's done. That's all that you got to do. So, let's save that first. Save as. Again, just like the other one, underscore custom keep it all the same, keep it consistent. Last thing that you have to do is attach pattern. Attach pattern is where you're joining this device with your PCB footprint and making sure that each pin goes to where it should. So pin one goes to pin goes to pad one, pin two goes to pad two, pin three to pad three and so on. So down here these are libraries which I've already loaded myself which I've worked on before my library one that I've custom one done what I've done for myself in the past fortunately we're working in one called custom so make sure library add custom library Let me scroll down there it is custom library select this and there's our little device select our device and what we do there it is OE goes to let's see whoops I didn't want to do that, did I? Hit escape. Alright, let's do that again. Back into attach pattern. Custom. SG1, there we go. So, highlighting over the top of these pads. Don't click on them. We've got pin 1 going to pin 1. They're actually highlighted in red. Pin 2 to pin 4, which is pin 2 and so on. Out is next one. VCC is next one. So, as you can see, it does follow, it does all work around. If it doesn't, you can either change down here, you can swap pins, and so now GND and OE are swapped, and so on. You can swap them back, or you can click and you can run the line to a different location if you want. So VCC is now that pin, OE is now goes to that pin, and so on. You can click through it and do GND down to that one if you really want to now everything's completely asked about it so let's change all that back now to as it should be here we go so it's just assigning footprints to, to uh, components and the pins make sure it all match up so okay and save save to library or save to library in the actual menu everything's done and that is basically all you need to do for doing the a uh, chip layout so let's exit out of that double check that it works into schematic where's our custom library custom 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 oh it's not there there it is custom that's our custom library you can whack that component down escape you can connect it up however you like whatever just as a quick test that'll probably blow the arse out of it but who cares this is just a test and if we convert to PCB okay there it is and our rats lines are connected and it's on the top layer denoted as red brilliant you know and if you want custom there it is custom in our custom layout right there it's the first one you can whack them down like I said and it increments X T6 and it's got a little dot denoting where pin 1 is and so on so yeah really simple to do and I will leave you there making components in dip trace piece of piss